don't abandon yourself to appease the masses. A major truth bomb from the spiritual smartass himself, Brandon Marshall. In this episode of Today's Thought Leader, Brandon shows us how to drop the mask and get unfiltered with our audience. Tune in and learn why marketing to your niche is an old school tactic. Why being real is the only way to attract soul aligned clients and two powerful journaling prompts to help you get unfiltered with your messaging. Brandon, Mar Brandon Marshall is the spiritual smartass. Reading his content is seeing what it's like when marketing, spirituality, and comedy collide. He's best at helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs unleash their natural magnetism in their content. Brandon helps leaders go from obscurity to creating addictive, scroll-stopping content. Today's episode is sponsored by my advanced digital training, Unleashed and Unapologetic, How to Become a Thought Leader and Build a Cult Following. If you're ready to gain visibility, build a loyal following, and create impact while increasing your income, enroll for the you and you training at rubyfermon.com forward slash unleashed. Now it is time to get unfiltered with the one and only Brandon Marshall. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back and I'm super fucking stoked for this guest. We've connected on the Facebooks, but haven't really connected in real life. And this is like our first time doing a video conference thing. And I'm super fucking excited because he is unfiltered as fuck. If you think I'm unfiltered, wait until you meet Brandon. So Brandon, welcome to today's Thought Leader. Super excited to have you here. What's up? I hope that <laughs> intro music, whatever it was, it was like really hardcore because one time I was in, one time I was introduced on stage as a comedian with like a slow jam and it was like wait are we about to have set like is there like sex going on in this stand-up show like what, what the fuck's going on so yeah it's good to be here <laughs> um well now that you mention it maybe I will edit this with a slow jam in the <laughs> <laughs> it's like you entered the love cast. <laughs> yes. Okay, all jokes aside, but really there's going to be a lot of jokes on this episode. I have a feeling um just get ready to laugh. But um let's start with I want to start here. Who the fuck is Brandon Marshall? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out myself. That's basically what the my entire group and brand and all that stuff is like me learning more about myself like i would say that's a deeper that's a deeper thing to it but like basically who the fuck is brandon marshall came from a mentor and her friend talking to each other and she was like name dropping me on a live stream and she was like who the fuck is brandon marshall so <laughs> then i just rolled with it because people just started saying it so instead of doing like a perfect elevator pitch i just right. give them that question and have them pondering that for days right yeah so for our listeners for those of you who don't know brandon he has a facebook group um called who the fuck is brandon marshall and he just puts it out there in that way and um what he's known for specifically is showing up unfiltered as fuck and helping other purpose-driven entrepreneur uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurs to do the same um so why I want to start here. Like, why is that even important to you? It's important to me because it just lights me up to see people express themselves and show that dark side, I guess. Because I don't know, I've just been that when I was growing up, I was always like the black sheep of the family. And I was always a person who was doing creative pursuits and stuff. And um, it just seems like I always dived into that stuff head first. And I noticed people around me, they were kind of like in their conditioning and in their bubble. And mm -hmm. I just like ripping that open and be like, look, we could do it this way. You don't, you, you have permission to be all of you and you don't have to worry about other people's judgment. So I don't know. It's just like sparked something in my heart when I see somebody step out of their, the social norms and do some crazy shit and they stop giving a fuck about what people think. Yeah. And it, and I totally resonate with this because um, my brand is very similar. I love helping people become unleashed um, and really, you know, I think that there's this common misconception. I don't know if you found this, that in order to show up unfiltered, you have to be bold and brash and say, fuck, and do all these things. And so we have people who like lean too far into that polarity when it's really not even them. 
and it yeah. comes across as ingenuine. Do you get that? <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen people who are like normally quiet or like they just like take, they, they find a mentor and they're like, oh my God, they're doing this bravely and boldly. And then they take on their kind of signature thing. Right. And then they're like, I don't give a fuck, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you're, you're trying too hard. Like the right. whole point of being authentic is being fully centered in who you are and amplifying that, like amplifying any piece of you and sure, maybe make it louder, but you don't have to abandon yourself in order to do so. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the tough part, right? It's like yeah. finding that, that middle ground of like, what does it actually mean to really be me? Especially because these people and essentially us maybe a few years ago, I don't know. Um, <laughs> we, we never have really connected with who we are because we've been walking around carrying these, wearing these masks and these filters and trying to uh, appease to the masses, AKA our family and society and all that shit. And, and so we're now reaching this place and cause you work specifically with entrepreneurs, correct? Yeah. yeah. And so people start to get into purpose driven entrepreneurship. They're fighting to get their voices heard and they really want to start showing up authentically, but how? Like that seems to be the biggest yeah. fucking question. Like how, how do I be real when I've, I've never really been real before? I like, first of all, own, own the amazing parts of your life that you may be overlooking. Um, what I see a lot of people do is they see these entrepreneurs and influencers like doing the photo shoot, shoot in front of the Eiffel Tower or, you know, something like that. And then they're like, oh my God, my life has to be like that. And I need to get to the Eiffel mm -hmm. Tower and I need to get my rose gold MacBook and <laughs> eating a fucking croissant. And I got to get <laughs> to the Eiffel Tower and do the same thing. And actually I've seen other influencers who are just like, this is my life and this is my husband and you know, I'm doing a story of us going to dinner or whatever. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be super flashy because there's mm -hmm. other people like you um, that want to see what you do behind the scenes and they'll be amazed by it. Even if like in your mind, you're like, I don't know, that's boring compared to other people. And I think on a level, we all might judge that when we're doing like Instagram stories is like, mm -hmm. who the hell would want to see me walking down the street or something or right. telling a random joke. So it's really looking at your life and valuing it and just trusting that, well, not even that, like just doing it to, to show your life, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, but you don't even, you're not even trying to impress people. You just know that there's going to be people that are interested, but like, it's not like a, I'm going to do this for this certain result. It's like, I'm just right. going to show up as me and right. express my art. Yeah. That's a really great way to put it. Um, is, and the visual I get for that is like inviting someone into your house. Like you open the front door, they walk in and then that's it. Like they just chill with you and see what's going on versus like, Hey, I'm going to invite someone to come over to my house, open the door. And I've like totally redecorated. I'm serving like fucking caviar. I don't even eat caviar, maybe some champagne. I don't drink champagne. It's like, here, here's my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, don't abandon yourself in order to appease mm. other people. Mm. Don't abandon your, I'm writing this down. Don't <laughs> abandon yourself to appease other people. That is powerful. Um, because that's, I mean, let's be real. That's what the social media platforms tend to do. Yeah. <laughs> is everyone is just trying to impress and appease and it's creating this major disconnect, uh, between who we truly are, you know, and, and who we really want to be. I feel like a lot of people, or at least I've noticed, like a lot of people fall into the trap of like, who I think I should be or who I think people want me to be versus here's who I am. Yeah. My, my approach would probably be like me abandoning myself would probably be the opposite. And that's what I've done in the past where it's like, Oh, in order to be like the spiritual life coach, I better tone down on the cussing. I better like, I better act like I have it. Like I'm perfect. And it's like, I, I have this very clean language and people see me as this like spiritual guru. And it's like, 
cool. Like there's, a, that's what the spiritual smart ass thing was created. It's mm -hmm. like mixing in the comedy and the spirituality. And I realized that me turning things up and doing the crazy shit sometimes, or maybe all the time, I don't mm -hmm. know, but um, like just pushing the envelope, that's part of what makes me who I am. So I had to right. learn like every time that I post or write some content, instead of saying, maybe I should tone this down. It's like, no, turn it way the fuck up. Cause that's what people like. Right. But that's also, so that's what people like, but that's also who you are. Yeah. 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 Cause turning things up, like, I don't know that you, you gotta be intentional around, around your content too. And knowing like the end result that you want, because you could be turning things up and creating total fucking dumpster fire <laughs> and, <laughs> and people love fucking drama so it's like you have those people on facebook that's like ah my life is shit right now and i punched my neighbor in the face and blah 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 and everyone's like commenting and they're like yeah 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 but right. it's not what is that what what value are you bringing so um like i saw i saw a live stream that you did about vulnerability a while mm -hmm. back and that's the way I think about vulnerability. It's like when you do vulnerability, think of depositing value rather than withdrawing value. Mm. So if you're like creating drama and you're looking for that attention or like that, those empty calories of attention, then it's like you're withdrawing value from your audience. Mm. Yeah, that's so, it's so true. I loved that live. Thanks for watching that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it's, um, I've just noticed that a lot of people, cause pol being polarizing is fun, right? I think yeah. me and you have fun with it. Um, but there's a diff, there's a major difference between being polarizing for the sake of being polarizing and then just being polarizing because your opinion is actually polarizing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the people who are trying to be polarizing for the sake of being polarizing it's like, they're the ones who are just starting all these dumpster fires for no fucking reason. Like what is, I get that. Like, what is your intention? And so for you, you recommend for purpose-driven entrepreneurs, you know, the people that you serve our listeners right now is everything that you're posting, um, really be intentional with, yeah. with the post and the shit. Yeah. Like think of the, everyone gets so obsessed about creating this perfect fucking avatar and it's like, <laughs> What toothpaste do they use? Are they 70 years old and uh, a male that's 70 years old or whatever? Mm -hmm. and it's like, instead of thinking of that, what's the vibration do you want people to be? Like, what's the energy and vibration? Are they joining your programs? Mm -hmm. So maybe if you're meant to be a reality show and your whole income is based off drama, then sure, like do videos of like you fighting your brother or something like that. <laughs> but if if you're meant to be a life coach or a service provider that's like your service is based off people feeling better and becoming more of who they are to the core mm -hmm. then your angle your the vibration of what you post ought to be, like most of it should be like hey you know like like something that feels good mm -hmm. um like i could use my humor in a way of pointing out all the dark shit in the world and i think like you know, you don't want to ignore all the things that are going on in the world. But like, if I put my, based off my humor, like 90% of everything that's going wrong, mm -hmm. then there would be a disconnect with what I'm trying to do to, to what I'm trying to bring to the world. Um, right. So it's very good to be intentional of like what's going on on the back end and what service you're providing. Yeah. So that means you need to be super clear on like, what is it that you really want to do here? yeah <laughs> how yeah, how attention. is it that you really want to serve people um what do you want to help them with what do you want to support them with and then making sure that all the content that you're sharing really aligns with that or and like is on the same vibration as that yeah if you're going to be polarizing be intentional about it right. i mean obviously if you're if you're operating from the core then your stuff's going to naturally be polarizing because you're saying stuff that's going to trigger people into becoming, you know, just becoming better and more of themselves. And mm -hmm. sometimes like you naturally being you is going to be so potent and so strong that people are naturally going to be like, what the fuck? We're ha you know, yeah. so um, you don't have to try to be polarizing. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, I think when people 
try and be everything to everyone, which is what a lot of entrepreneurs do. They're like, I just want to, I want to please everyone. I want to get all the likes. I want to get all the engagement. Like I just want to fit in. Um, They are fluffy and ambiguous and um, like there's nothing, there's no, there's no meat to it. Um, And so the content's okay. You know, like it, it, it's okay. They get likes, they get follows. Um, but the polarizing comes out of like you just being you, uh, yeah. let me show you w- what I really think. Like, let me share w- my real opinions about this. And that in itself is polarizing. And it's not like I have to manufacture or craft this polarizing opinion in order to show up polarizing in order to get a bunch of engagement. I've seen people do this. And then what happens is in the comment thread, when people actually rebuttal is the person who did the post is like, uh, ooh, ooh, uh, yeah. I don't know what to do. Or they freak out and they get defensive. And it's like, you didn't really share a real opinion that you, yeah. in, that you stand in. And so you're all like, you're all about helping people essentially be as real as fu- as fucking possible. Yeah, because when you get that specific and laser focused and that's your values and you stand by it, that's when people start becoming your soul aligned clients. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're creating an actual movement rather than just saying, oh, this feels good. Mm -hmm. Uh, And something something else I've seen is like groups of 20,000 people, um, but the message is kind of general. And it's like, I guess it's kind of like a poppy feel of like, hey, you know, come in to whatever like do this fake stuff or whatever and then what happens is you have a lot of lukewarm people in the group Mm. that aren't really like i'm in this group because i'm part of the community they're just kind of like oh yeah it's a buzzword that attracted me so whatever i'm just hanging out here and they don't really respect the admin and um like i've seen some instances where the admin is like sort of like will move any way the group goes and there's right. not that solid, um, there's not that solid foundation there. Yeah. And in order to, to be a true leader, you need to create those containers for people and to show up in that way, because that's what actually motivates other people to either be part of a movement or to create their own movements, not this wishy-washy, I'll just roll with the punches and... Yeah. I'll just become whatever you want me to be so that I can keep you in my group versus like, Oh my God, like I don't give a fuck if I lose people from this group. If you don't align with me, cool. Get the fuck out. Yeah. It's exhausting (laughs) to do the other way because people are messaging you. And um, like if, if you're showcasing that you're going to change your opinion off a, off a whim, people can smell that and they'll message you and they're like, I don't like how you did that. I want you to change it. And I don't like how you did this. I want you to change it. And then you're like trying to make everyone happy and it's just fucking exhausting. And it leads to nowhere. Yeah. So do you think the root cause of a lot of that is that people pleasing? Like people are just there to people please? Like what are, what are some, what's some of the bullshit that, or like, what's the biggest bullshit that your clients tend to deal with that's stopping them from showing up as real as they can be? I would say it's a few things. It's like trying to make everyone happy. Is that people pleasing? Then it's when it's those social contracts of what people expect you to be. Mm. So it's like they've met you on certain terms and conditions and you were, you know, you may have been operating from a mask and now they expect you to be the consistent same person all the fucking time. And so many people do this in different online corners. It's like, they expect you to be this, this, and this. And as soon as you fall out of line with that, they're like, fuck you. And um, so you got to be able to step out of those social contracts and just be you. And what happens is sometimes people will get that bravery and they'll, they'll see things start turning for them. Like they might do something that's more, funny and and like showcasing their humor that they never did before Mm -hmm. or maybe they're like speaking on a truth that they were afraid to do at first and at first they get like all these positive comments and stuff but then they have either like friends business partners or random people messaging them or calling them like you shouldn't do that you're being mean Uh, and they're they're um saying their own judgments about what they're doing so then they contract and it's like okay let me go back into my space again 
Um, so that resistance, being able to break through that resistance and expect it to happen and knowing that there's something on the other end of that, that's the key right there. Because mm -hmm. once you set that boundary, then people stop testing you. Um, right. Like if someone's post, like copy and pasted one of my posts right now uh -huh. and sent it to their own audience, they'd probably get like 15 messages of like, what the fuck? Why did you do that? <laughs> Me, my inbox is empty. It's like, yeah, that's, that's branded. I'm not even going to bother. Even the yeah. people that are pissed off, they're like, yeah, that's branded. I'm not going to bother about that. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting to me um, that this is such a, I mean, in, in my opinion, I think it's like the number one block that entrepreneurs face today. Yeah. And I think so much of this has to do with we're in the era of digital media, you know, social media is a thing. Everyone's lives are exposed and it's amazing because we are now in charge of our, our digital bl blueprint in a way. Yeah. And it's also shitty because we are now in charge of our digital blueprint, right? Yeah. So a lot of us try and control and manipulate how we're being perceived when um, you said something earlier, you said soul aligned clients. And I love that term, soul aligned clients. Um, in order for you to attract those soul aligned clients, like the clients that actually excite you, the clients that you really, really love to jam with, then you need to show up real. You know, like I don't think I could ever work with a client who doesn't believe in a higher power, which is why I talk about God yeah. and the universe and all of that stuff. If, if you don't believe in anything, I, we would never be able to work together. So I'm not going to try and um, I'm not going to purposely avoid using the word God in my copy or using the universe in my copy. And yet so many people do this because again, they want to appease the masses. And yeah. And, and so like, let's say right now our listeners, there's people listening and they're like, yeah, but like, how do I be real? Like, how do, how do I, how do I be authentic? Like, I think I'm being authentic. What if people don't like me? Like what, what are some of the first steps that they can start taking to, um, experiment in that space and get comfortable in that space? Yeah. So the first step with that is I would get out the idea that you have to be like design some type of alias or character that you have to be for this outside ideal client that you're studying, which is what a lot of business teaches is like right. study this ideal client. And maybe it's, it's useful. It's definitely useful for some businesses, but if you're like speaking from the soul and you're purpose driven and your clients are a reflection of who you are and that's what you want, then doing that old business model isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot harder doing that because you're studying, at least for me, like studying someone outside of who I am rather than just expressing myself, um, that feels a lot heavier and tougher to do. So instead of doing that, just start out with this journaling exercise of five main things that you stand for, mm -hmm. um, like without even worrying about other people judging you for it, just mm -hmm. write down five things you stand for, whether it's in business or just morals that you have in life in general, even if you haven't spoken up about it or anything, mm -hmm. and then write down five things that you would usually rage against. Like, mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, I'm here to speak up against. And for me, like one thing that comes up, like for speaking up against for me is like conformity in business. Like mm -hmm. all the things that people mm -hmm. are telling you to do, like I like to rip all that up and tell you like, no, that's, you can do it a different way. Mm -hmm. um, so honing down on that, and then even, even going back to it every day for a while, where yeah. it's like, you're just going back to it and saying, okay, what else, what, what else is true? Like digging, digging beneath the surface and saying, okay, is there more to journal on this? Is there more to discover about what I really want to speak up against and what I want to speak for? Um, but not just keep that with the journaling, mm -hmm. also start putting that out there, like mm. start putting those posts out there. Maybe even a live stream where you're like, I'm just fully owning who I am, what I stand for and what my goals are. Even like your big fucking goals where it's like, I, I plan to be earning seven figures mm -hmm. and just fucking owning that. Cause like sometimes we look, look down on the, on claiming those big ass goals. Cause we're afraid of what people are going to think. Right. Um, and the main mentality around that is when you show up, knowing that your message will always evolve and you'll always grow by bouncing back with the feedback like you're you're 
going in, you're writing your message, you're receiving some of the feedback, you're understanding what works, but not just looking at what works from an outside perspective. You see, you know, what feels good to you and what mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. And um, something that I noticed is when I stepped outside of like trying to do everything under a niche, I noticed when I talk about my experiences, like my life story, um, experiences I had in the military, um, things like that. When I started talking about that, that was really something I felt like I needed to express. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people were engaging with. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're allowing yourself to be imperfect because everyone has a short attention span anyway. No one's going right. to give a fuck about the post you made that got three likes. Um, some <laughs> of my views were different. And like three years ago, I, I was probably more of doing the polarization just for the fuck of polarizing. Right. But people see me now, they're not going to be like, oh, well, three years ago, blah, 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 blah. Right. It's like, they're going to see who you are and see the growth that you make. And you're allowing people to see how you can grow and evolve as well. So yeah. none of us are perfect. So allow yourself not to be perfect. Wait, none of us are perfect? Yeah, it's true. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess, I I I guess on, a 5D, on a 5D level, we're yeah. all perfect, right? We're all perfect in the 5D. Um, that, okay, so what I heard you say is rather than doing this, the marketing, the messaging, the content creation from an external place, moving it inwards and simply getting in touch with like, what is it that you really want to say? Like, what yeah. is it that you really want to express and express that? Because that is what's going to essentially draw the right people into your orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Versus, and, and that's, that sounds so much more freeing and so much more fun, right? Than yeah. saying, Hey, here is this perfect little avatar of this, girl who sits at her desk and feels this and drinks coffee and does all these things <laughs> and I'm going to do this and I'm going to, because then we have to think like a hundred different things to craft this perfectly crafted message and who knows if it's going to land or not. Yeah. And that's like, not even who they are on a soul level. They might be, you know, maybe their soul doesn't even want coffee every morning, but I, right. I guess I wouldn't say that because I'm in love with coffee. But, um, <laughs> But like, you know, that like they might be working at their desk or whatever, and that might not be what they're feeling on a soul level. And that's mm -hmm. not what's going to like penetrate into what they really, really feel. Right. Like that's just kind of scratching the surface and being like, okay, well, I guess this is what this person is. It's like you're like that model is like connecting with another person's mask. Yeah. So it's like you're not going to get um, you're going to get some success with it, but it's like you're not going to get the fulfillment and maybe not even that, that aligned client that you want. Right. I also find that some of those types of messages, the ones that are, are so carefully crafted um, for the intention of like enrollment or whatever, uh, they can trigger people into fight or flight yeah. versus like when you write something from the heart or write something from the soul, it creates like this soul connection where someone's like, they'll pause their scrolling and then be like, Oh, like yeah. that, that I feel that versus like, Oh shit. I need to act from here of this weird place that I'm feeling. And this message just fucking triggered me. And it's really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, so really this is just a deep dive in, in getting to know you like yourself like all of this, everything that we're talking about right now, yeah. like becoming unfiltered is like a deep dive into like, the school of you, getting to know who you are and experimenting with that and showing up and, and seeing how, how much, how, how deep can you go within yourself to get to know who you actually are? I mean, cause this shit, this is a shit they didn't teach us in school. At Absolutely. least when we were kids, they didn't teach us this. <laughs> yeah. I'd be surprised if they're teaching it now, but I would be amazed if um, the day that I have kids, they go to school and they're like, yeah, we're learning in third grade how to dig deeper into who we are. Yeah. Well, I learned about my top five values today. <laughs> like, no one teaches us this shit. No one teaches yeah. us what's actually important to us. And I think especially for purpose-driven entrepreneurs and leaders, the people that we both serve, it's imperative. It's imperative. It's crucial that we inspire and ignite people to become their most unleashed and unfiltered selves because um, there's, 
there's far too many like copycat quote unquote leaders and falsified leaders and um, dare I say, quote unquote, influencers out there, (laughs) influencers out there who are like manipulating and their images and concocting like this really fucked up um, perception of who they are, which is creating a deeper divide within our society and i think at the end of the day everyone is just wanting to feel more connected especially our audiences our audiences want to connect with us they don't want to feel like we're too far away or we're on a pedestal or like oh there's brandon he's so perfect like i i don't think i could ever be that perfect and then they follow you out of like this fear kind of weird psychology thing that that doesn't work. <laughs> and I imagine, like, I would get annoyed by that if I had a bunch of fanboys, fangirls, or whatever, that's like, they're just like little clones of me. And I'm right. like, this sounds like my post. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. And yet people do it. Right. Yeah. And, and if, if to our listeners, for those of you listening, and I think we've all done this where we've seen something, it inspires us, and then we kind of run with it without really diving into like, what is it that you liked about this? Like it, it, what is it that you liked about Brandon's post? It's likely not the post itself, like word for word verbatim. It's the energy behind it and the vibration behind it. Like here's Brandon being completely unfiltered. Wow. That feels amazing. I wish I could be that. So instead of you just playing with that freedom within yourself, you go and you copy what he's doing. And I feel like this is what people do is they're attracted to the vibration behind the message. And so they'll copy that um, without really diving deeper. of What is it that I feel that is really attracting me to this message or to this person or to how they're showing up? I mean, I see it at my events all because I'm super fucking fiery and I'll say fuck a lot and I activate people and that's just where I thrive. I love it. And in the middle of the event, I'll, this happens every year at my event. One, at least one person will stand up and it's like the quietest person in the room. And it's a person who's got like this super feminine flowy energy and they'll stand up and they'll grab the mic and they'll be like, fuck this, fuck that, fuck this, fuck that. <laughs> and then like, they just, they think they're becoming unleashed and unleashing who they are. And it's like, no, you're actually, you're attracted to what I'm bringing to the table because I'm showing you what it looks like to be fully embodied as your authentic self. And then you're running with like my character. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I want to, I would love to leave, like you gave some great journaling exercises. I love that. Um, for those of you who are interested, if you're listening this far than you are, in, in learning how to become your most un filtered self, like do that journaling exercise, like the five main things that you stand for and the five things that you rage against. I fucking love that. And then for those who are just like so scared to put themselves out there, other than this journaling exercise, like what is something that you tell your clients to do that really helps tip them over that edge? The main thing is that you don't have to be perfect. Like I know I said that earlier, but it's like, you don't have to be perfect at all. And you get to, everything can be like step by step. So allow yourself to get on that live stream, even if you're scared, because you'll figure out the words to say. Um, allow yourself to write that post. Don't try to think of like all the perfect words or going back and deleting it. What if you just allowed yourself to just start typing without editing or anything? Mm-hmm. And if you feel scared to post it, just post it and then close the laptop and run away. <laughs> <laughs> and just pretend that it never happened. And then you'll come back after that charge is re- and you realize, oh, wait, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So yeah. even if you got to practice doing that, um, practice until it becomes a habit. And then yeah. soon you're not going to be writing and running away from the laptop. Soon you're, because you, when you break that barrier and you start moving forward, um, and you enter that sort of like new zone, comfort zone, mm-hmm. then it becomes just like brushing your teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Super important for everyone to understand that. Like this isn't like an overnight thing for those of you who have been so fucking scared to put yourself at, put yourselves out there. I didn't start showing up as, as who I feel I truly am overnight. 
Like this has yeah. been like a process that I've been diving into since 2012. And it's been just me showing up and diving deeper and deeper into who I am. So like Brandon said, start somewhere and don't aim to be perfect. I love that. Like be fucking imperfect. How about that? Yeah. Aim to be imperfect. <laughs> Misspell a word, misspell a word on perfect, purpose, not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> misspell shit on purpose and, and that'll help you get more engagement because then you'll have like a bunch of people are like, you spelled that wrong. <laughs> so, like, I love that. I love that. I'm going to go right after this and I'm going to do a post with the three different theirs and I'm going to do them all wrong. Yeah. That's how you got <laughs> And then the different yours. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Brandon, why don't you tell our audience where they can get more of you? And then I'll link this in the show notes too. If you're, if you're brave enough, step into the group. Who the fuck, <laughs> who the fuck is Brandon Marshall? Um, it's, a, it's a fun time. There's a mixture of like just fun, fun shenanigans, but also deep insights on how you can tap in, into deeper into who you are and people who are on the same journey. So it's a good time there. Cool. So I'm going to have that Facebook group link in the show notes. And is there anything like a final thought that you want to leave behind for our listeners? Hmm. I would just say be willing to mess things up. Hmm. <laughs> like the same perfect, imperfect idea. Be willing to mess things up because it's like everyone's so self-consumed with who they are they're not fucking worried about you. So <laughs> remember that no one's really worried about you and that no one has you under a microscope like you have yourself under a microscope. Boom. That was the truth bomb everybody needs to hear. Oh, yeah. Brandon, thank you so much um, for just bringing it today. It's been super fun. And I know that um, our audience is going to get uh, a lot of great insights from this episode. Um, I think we both share like a very common purpose of just helping people show up as their true selves. So it's just been awesome to jam with you oh, yeah. and um, to our listeners, make sure that if you vibe with Brandon, go into his group, who the fuck is Brandon Marshall to get more of him. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brandon. I appreciate you. You are awesome. <laughs> Thanks Ruby. It was fun. And to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of Today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. If you dig this episode with me and Brandon, please drop a rating and a review. Make sure the review is unfiltered. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> If you have any questions for either of us, please reach out to us on social media. Everything will be in the show notes and I will see you back here on Thursday for a brand new episode of Today's Salt Theater.